Hi, this is Tad Hussey with Kiss Organics, and I'm here today to take a look under the microscope at mammoth pea and see if there are ways that we might be able to extract and replicate some of these microorganisms uh, just to make the mammoth pea go a little bit further. Okay, this is we're here with mammoth pea. This is uh, directly out of a sample bottle that I received. Uh, this bottle I've had for, oh, at least a few months now. It's just been sitting in my lab. Uh, this is at 400 times magnification using a phase contrast microscope. Uh, you can see there's actually a fair bit of active uh, motile bacteria running around. And um, what I'm guessing is a little piece of alfalfa, since I know they use alfalfa in their, uh, in their process um, up in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Uh, so what we're going to attempt to do today is... Uh, in distilled water, mix some micro pea with a few different ingredients and see if we can't uh, replicate some of these organisms to make our mammoth pea just go a little bit further. Okay, we're back. This is about 12 hours later. This is the mammoth pea again with uh, nothing but distilled water. So after 12 hours, you can see we have uh, what appears to be more active microbes uh, even without a food source. Now we'll go on to check and see how different food sources affected these different microbes. Okay, here's the mammoth pea again. This time I've added um, a small amount of unsulfured blackstrap molasses. As you can see, got quite a bit more activity with the added food source. Pretty much the whole slide looks about like this. Okay, we're back. This is the microbe catalyst added to the mammoth pea at around uh, 16 hours in. And uh, you'll notice you don't have quite the same uh, levels of bacterial growth as we had using the molasses, but what you do see is a much greater diversity of uh, microorganisms which is really what we want we can't guarantee that that molasses is growing out all of the all of the pea solubilizing bacteria that mammoth pea is uh, adding into the mix and uh, while we can't do the same with the uh, microbe catalyst at least not with the with just direct microscopy we are able to at least determine that the there is a much greater diversity in morphology uh, looking at this sample which I find encouraging. Okay, here's the alfalfa at 16 hours with the mammoth pea in distilled water. And that's, uh, as you can see, there's pretty good uh, bacterial growth again, more than the control. And there appears to be a little bit more um, morphological diversity than we saw with the molasses, but not quite as much growth. So I'm wondering if alfalfa is a little better food source, especially considering they use alfalfa as part of their uh, as part of their process, manufacturing process. Or I'm wondering if I can um, up the amount of microbe catalyst that I used as a way of getting a little bit more bacterial growth while still maintaining that diversity of microorganisms. So keep in mind too that this test is not. Uh, completely conclusive. We can't determine exactly which microorganisms from the micro pea are being uh, being replicated and if we're losing any in the process. Uh, so the next step would be to do some plant trials to determine uh, what sorts of uh, plant response we get from a, a, a mixture like this that's been that's been brewed. Okay, so this is just mammoth pea in distilled water at 28 hours, uh, no food sources whatsoever. As you can see, we're getting uh, quite a bit of uh, motile bacteria, not as much biomass as the other slides, uh, but possibly a little bit better uh, morphological diversity, which makes sense, assuming that all these microorganisms uh, or these different bacterial species are in mammoth pea. Um, I think it speaks to the quality of the product in regards to there being a lot of good biological activity 
um, this particular sample that I pulled uh, was from a sample bottle that I've had for at least four months just sitting on a shelf um, in you know normal room temperatures now by comparison here's the mammoth pea with the molasses and distilled water at 28 hours and as you can see uh, there's quite a bit of bacterial biomass but it appears that we don't have the same uh, level of diversity that we were getting by feeding it a more diversified food source like the microbe catalyst uh, but we do appear to be feeding at least one species of bacteria that seems pretty happy um, so this is pretty much what uh, most of the slide look like though you'll have um, just a few pockets of that really high uh, high density that we saw right at the beginning of this slide. Okay, here's the mammoth pea in distilled water with organic alfalfa meal at 28 hours. Uh, as you can see, we do have um, good bacterial growth and maybe um, a little bit more diversity than we we're seeing compared to the molasses. Uh, not as much as with the microbe catalyst, but um, a little bit more motile bacteria, not as much biomass as the uh, molasses was creating, but maybe a little bit better morphological diversity. Okay, we're back with the mammoth pea and distilled water with the microbe catalyst at around 28 hours. We're seeing a lot more uh, bacterial biomass, and a lot of it is, as you can see, um, starting to cluster around uh, certain parts of the the microbe catalyst, some of the organic matter in there. Um, this appears, so this appears to be a pretty good food source option for at least some of the bacteria, bacterial species that are in the mammoth pea. Um, I'm seeing some morphological diversity, but maybe not quite as much as we had in the original sample, which may, may lead me to believe that not all of the Various pea solubilizing species of bacteria are being um, are, are are being multiplied, but uh, I think it definitely is uh, worth a shot. And I think this is a great way to possibly extend your mammoth pea a little bit further.